No one in history has been associated with love and poetry outside of the goddess herself, like the poet Sappho. The name goes hand in hand with love and poetry. With the greatest of all time that you can name, Sappho is definitely there. In her time, she was called the Tenth Muse. That's the honor she had. The centuries after her death, that they would still build statues in honor of Sappho. Also, coins would be minted and made and commemorated in honor of this woman. In a time when women were not even at the same social status as men, people honored Sappho. That's how powerful her work is. And today, we're going to talk about Sappho, a little bit about her, and some of the poetry, and my review of this book that is my copy of the complete works of Sappho. So let's talk about that today. So what does history know of Sappho? Really not too much um, other than what we know of her work that has been lost. A lot of it's been lost through time. And you'll notice that when you read the poetry of Sappho that many of her poems are only one or two lines. Really not through intention, but through age and things being lost. And also, some of her work was never even translated, so there were poems that she had written that she had a different accent in different language than the mainstream. And so when mainstream Greeks of the time tried to translate her work, they didn't understand her dialect. Um, I can't remember the technical names of the language that she had compared to the dialect that the, main, that the other Greeks had. But it was a very unique dialect, and she spoke it and when she would write it. And so some of work just couldn't be translated because they didn't know what she was saying. So interesting things that like that. And that she came from a wealthy family, that she was born into a wealthy family, which probably helped her status a little bit. What is interesting, what I do enjoy about the work of Sappho is that in few short words, do again to some of the words in time being lost and whatnot, it conveys, it conveys beauty. And the book that I have is The Complete Work, The Complete Poems of Sappho. This is the book that I recommend if you're ever interested in reading about Sappho and her poems because you can't get any more complete than a complete book of Sappho. And it is translated by Willis Barnstone. And what's also interesting about Sappho is that not only does she have poems about love, age, youth, death, I mean, she talks about so much, and the poetry just really hits home on everything. She also has prayers to the gods and goddesses. In particular, she prays and was very close to Aphrodite. So this time of year, for sure, is a time to read the poetry of Sappho because she has prayers to Aphrodite. And we learn more about Aphrodite and how Aphrodite is viewed by reading the poetry of Sappho. And I actually use her prayer to Aphrodite. I've used it in ritual before because it's beautiful and it just touches on some things. So with that said, let me read to you the prayer to Aphrodite by Sappho. On your dappled throne, eternal Aphrodite, cunning daughter of Zeus, I beg you, do not crush my heart with pain, O lady. But come here, if ever before, you heard my voice from far away, and yielding left your father's house on gold and came. Yoking birds to your chariot, beautiful quick sparrows whirring on beating wings, took you from heaven down to mid-sky over the black earth, and soon you arrived. O blessed one, on your deathless face a smile. You ask me what I'm suffering and why I called you. Why I most, what I most want to happen in my crazy heart. Whom shall I persuade again to take you into her love? Who, O Sappho, wrongs you? If she runs away, soon she will pursue. If she scorns gifts, now she will bribe. 
If she doesn't love, soon she will love even unwillingly. Come to me now and loosen me from my blunt agony. Leave her and fill my heart with fire and stand by me and be my ally. It's beautiful poetry. And <laughs> I think that my favorite thing, one of my favorite things that Safa wrote is her, what she calls Eros, the god of lust and love and attraction. She calls Eros the loosener of limbs. And <clears throat> it's funny because she does a prayer to Artemis and she tells Eros, the loosener of limbs, to stay away from Artemis so that she may remain a virgin. So I'll never forget that for the rest of my life, that effort that um, Sappho refers to Eros as the loosener of limbs and stuff like that. And what's really cool about this book is not only do you get Sappho's poems, but also famous poems that have been attributed to Sappho that have historically been proven not actually written by her. There's a section in the book that actually says that these books or these poems were written and have always been attributed to Sappho, but actually are not written by her. And they give you the poems as well. So really cool book. So check out The Complete Works of Sappho or The Complete Poems of Sappho. Again, by translated... Willis Barnstone. Pretty cool. Anyway, guys, I'll talk to you later. Bye.